Hey, Olive, Arlo, and Frank. Grandpa coming to you from the back deck. I'm going to talk today about Genesis chapter 9. God's covenant with mankind through Noah. And then the, the curse of, of Canaan. Then God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Every living creature of the earth and every bird of the sky will be terrified of you. Everything that creeps on the ground and all the fish of the sea are under your authority. This is after the fall, after the flood. So they, it, it wants us to take charge of the world. That doesn't mean that I'm against um, the ecology or anything like that, that we should be harvesting all kinds of animals just for kicks, but it's the way the world is made. We eat animals and they're not supposed to eat us. I'm not going to get into all that stuff. You may eat any moving thing that lives. As I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. Now this is gonna change a little bit when the children of Israel come into the picture because they're gonna have certain things that, that they are supposed to eat and certain things that they're not supposed to eat. But for the rest of the world, for us, we can eat anything. I wouldn't eat anything. I've been places and seen things that I wouldn't eat. But you must not eat meat with its life. That is its blood. For your lifeblood, I will surely exact punishment from every living creature. I will exact punishment. From each person, I will exact punishment for the life of the individual since the man was his relative. Whoever sheds human blood by other humans, must his blood be shed. So we see here the basis for our criminal justice system. Death penalty. For in God's image, God has made humankind. So we're not supposed to destroy life. If we destroy human life, we're to be punished for that. And even as a police officer, there are strict rules, and I was a cop for eight years. There are strict rules when you can use deadly force against another individual. But as for you, be fruitful and multiply. Increase abundantly on the earth and multiply on it. God said to Noah and his sons, look, I now confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, including the birds, the domestic animals, and every living creature of the earth with you, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature of the earth. I confirm my covenant with you. Never again will all living things be wiped out by the waters of a flood. Never again will a flood destroy the earth. <clears throat> next time next time he's going to use fire but we kind of already had that part of the story I'm going to have to put this up here sorry yummy shake God said, this is the guarantee of the covenant I am making with you and every living creature with you, a, government, a, a covenant for all subsequent generations. I will place my rainbow in the clouds and it will become a guarantee of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, then I will remember my covenant with you 
and with all living creatures of all kinds. Never again will the waters become a flood and destroy all living things. When the rainbow is in the clouds, I will notice it and remember the perpetual covenant between God and all living creatures of all kinds that are on the earth. So every time you see a rainbow, think about that. That's a covenant. I thought I had something on my mouth, but it's something on the computer screen. The sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now Ham was the father of Canaan. These were the sons of Noah, and from them the whole earth was populated. Noah, a man of the soil, began to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of the wine, he got drunk and uncovered himself inside his tent. So he, he had a vineyard. It doesn't say that he made wine, but they've been there for a while because it's been long enough for grapes to grow in the vineyard that he planted and for the grape juice to ferment in the wine by itself. So they've, they've been there for a while and everything, and he gets drunk and, and is naked. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father's nakedness and told his two brothers who were outside. Shem and Japheth took the garment and placed it on their shoulders. Then they walked in backwards and covered up their father's nakedness. Their faces were turned the other way so they did not see their, spot, their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke, awoke from his drunken stupor, he learned what his youngest son had done to him. So he said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves he will be to his brothers. The lowest of slaves he will be to his brothers. He also said, Worthy of praise is the Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God enlarge Japheth's territory in numbers. May he live in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his slave. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. The entire lifetime of Noah was 950 years, and then he died. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but, but people throughout history have used the prophecy here to say that um, the children of Ham and your, your grandmother, your grandmother Clark, my wife, and Olive, your mom, Frank and Tom, your aunt Courtney, are descendants of, of Ham. But it and and they and their ancestors were slaves in the United States. But it's not saying that this is going to happen forever. This is a specific prophecy about when the children of Israel get into the land of Canaan. There's a reason why they go to the land of Canaan, and Ham was the son of Canaan. And, and the children of Ham that were there, the descendants of Ham, I should say, at, at first were overrunning the land and out of control. And, and the plan of God was that the children of Israel would take over that land. And anybody could leave who wanted to leave, but the ones that stayed would be slaves of, of the, Sh the Shemites. So, don't let anybody tell you that this is like, oh yeah, certain people are better than other people. I'm sure that Hitler actually knew this one part of the Bible because the Hitlers of the world always can look for what makes their crazy points. So, and if Hitler had really read it, he would have seen that the children of Japheth would be um, subservient to the children of Shem, to the Jews. He wouldn't have killed all those Jews, but Hitler also um, believed that 
that the black race was inferior to the white race. It wasn't just Jews, it was gypsies, Catholics, anybody who wasn't Aryan, German descent. Sad to say I am. So, a couple of you guys are too. Anyway, peace out.